one of the greatest scholars of Islam in our times. His name was Sheikh Muhammad Ali As-Sabuni, rahmatullahi alayhi. He passed away this morning at the age of 91. The Sheikh, he wrote over 50 books in, in the sciences of tafsir. He wrote commentaries on all six books of hadith. He spent about 40 years of his life teaching in Makkah al-Mukarramah. He was one of the Imams of Masjid al-Haram and was one of the teachers of Masjid al-Haram. He was originally from Syria, from Aleppo, and he was one of the final students of one of the greatest scholars of Halab, Sheikh Najibuddin Sirajuddin, Rahmatullahi Ali. He was a great scholar of Hadith and a great scholar of Islamic law. His, this great Sheikh, he passed away this morning. By his passing, we don't see the void being filled. Because when these giants of Islam, when they start to leave this world, the Prophet ﷺ informed us, those are the real signs of the Day of Judgment. When true knowledge is lifted, that is experienced in hearts, that penetrated through hearts. Sheikh Muhammad Ali al sabuni spent all of his life in studying, in teaching, in authoring. And I heard from one of his students, he said, that Sheikh Ali Sabuni said, with this hand of mine, I wrote 50,000 pages of tafsir. How many pages? 50,000 pages. And everything that he would write of tafsir, he used to always write it with his hand. Before it went to the printers, before it went to the typesetters and written on the computer, he would write it with his hand in taking honor of writing the explanation of the book of Allah and the hadith of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, I wrote more than 50,000 pages with this hand of mine. And Sheikh Ali al-Sabuni, one of my teachers, Sheikh Abdul Majid al-Hannawi, who lives in Medina al-Munawwara now, told me a very long time ago in the early 2000s, he said, Sheikh Ali al-Sabuni, he said to his wife, this is the first thing that I heard regarding Sheikh Ali al-Sabuni. He said to his wife, every time you give birth to a girl, I will buy you gold. I will buy you gold. So she gave birth to a daughter. His first child was a girl. He bought her lots of gold. Why? To take away this ill stereotype of people not being happy at the time of the birth of their daughters. The next time she gave birth, she gave birth to her daughter. The next time she gave birth, she gave birth to her daughter. He had seven daughters and every time he would buy his wife lots of gold when she would give birth to her daughter. Until the eighth time she gave birth to a boy. And all of, his, all of the Shaykh's children, the males of them and the females of them, all of them became scholars of Islam, ten of them. We have to remember that these great scholars of Islam, they are not, these are people who not only give service to themselves, but they give service to the entire ummah. They give service to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to his religion. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he didn't leave behind any inheritance of wealth for anybody to take, whether that be his family or his companions. He said, إِنَّمَا نُوَرِّثُ الْعِلْمِ فَمَنْ أَخَذَهُ أَخَذَ بِحَظٍ وَافِرٍ We, the prophets, he said, leave behind knowledge. Anybody who takes a portion of it has indeed taken a great portion. And we have to become people who take from the knowledge of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we have to take from the scholars whilst we have the opportunity and whilst they're still around. Once they've gone, then we have to remember that something enormous from our lives has disappeared. If one of us passes away, we'll, we will be mourned by our families. But when a scholar of Islam passes away, this Imam al-Ghazali radiallahu anh said, everything in the heavens and earth mourns that person, mourns that scholar. Why? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the fish in the oceans make istighfar and dua for the scholars of Islam. 
the fish in the oceans. Imam al-Ghazali said, if whilst they are alive, the fish in the oceans are making dua for them, then what do you think on the day that they pass away from this world, they will be mourning them. They will be feeling that there is something missing in our lives. How do the fish in the ocean know the scholars? How do they know them? The scholars have said, the benefit of a scholar is so great, the benefit of knowledge is so great, that not only human beings, but animals and all of Allah's creation get to recognize that person of knowledge who is giving benefit to humans and to others. So if the fish in the oceans know our scholars, our people of knowledge, then it is a duty upon each and every one of us that we know them also. Not only know them, but we introduce them to our families and to our children. It's, it's normal in human beings that we look up to people of fame. We look up to people who are popular, people who are spoken about. Who are popular and who are spoken about. And that's normal in human beings. My question is, if that's the case, then we should be well introduced onto the people of knowledge in our community worldwide, wherever they are. Because when people are uh, intrigued by a world figure, it doesn't matter if that person speaks their language or not, if he's from the same area as them or not, they're just intrigued by that person. Likewise should be the yearning of the people of knowledge, uh, 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 the yearning of the people of Islam towards the people of knowledge. They should know them, they should recognize them, they should seek out and go out of the way to meet them and to sit with them and to take from their knowledge in hope, in thinking that I'm not only taking knowledge from this particular individual, but rather I am taking it from the Prophet wasallam through this individual. Because the knowledge of Islam, unlike the sciences of the world, is an on, it's, it's a chain of narration which takes us back to the Prophet ﷺ. No scholar of Islam will say, I say, but rather they will say, Allah said and his messenger said. And sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And between them and the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there will be a chain of scholars and righteous people. When a seeker of knowledge, when a believing person sits before those people of knowledge and takes that knowledge, in reality that person has taken it directly from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.